So we're going to get started with Jeff here, and we're going to let uh, everybody just kind of go along the table here and introduce themselves, kind of who they are and where they're from, what area they work in, and then we're going to get started with some questions for you. Hi, my name is Jeff Johnson with Remax Professionals. I work in the West End, predominantly in South Tobago, uh, W6 in Toronto. Hi, I'm Liz Johnson. Uh, I work alongside Jeff with the great team that we have. Sorry. Um, we work in uh, out of Remax Professionals in, in Etobicoke. My name is Judy Mitchell, and I'm from St. John, New Brunswick, and I work for Remax Professionals St. John. My name is Mark Arnstein. I'm with Remax Hallmark, and I work in North Toronto or in Toronto. Cynthia D'Souza with Remax Ultimate, and I also work in Toronto. Great. So. Farming and prospecting, obviously everybody's here because they want to hear some secrets of what these guys are doing in their farming areas, how they're prospecting for business. So I'm just going to throw it out there. Anybody volunteering to go first? Mark? Great. So <laughs> tell us a little bit about your farm area, how you chose it, and kind of what sets you apart in that area. Thanks, Valerie. Um, my farm area is North Toronto, which is Young and Lawrence, Avenue Road and Lawrence, and that hood. Uh, it started off as being about a... 2,000 people when I first started about nine years ago, and then I uh, grow it now into about a 5,000 farm uh, mailer. So what we do is we mail out one piece basically every week, um, three pieces either a just list or just sold card, and then combine with a neighborhood newsletter that we do. And if anyone just saw the last presentation with uh, Melanie Galia uh, about video, we do a ton, a ton of video into the farm combined with the listings and with local merchants, uh, community events, basically everything we can do to com promote and uh, advertise the neighborhood that, we're, that I work in. So if you're doing a video to your farm area, yeah. what do you generally find is the best delivery method for that video? Um, well, a couple of things. One, I have posters or a bunch of uh, shelter ads in around the farm area uh, called NorthTorontoLiving.tv, uh, which we kind of advertise a bit like a TV show. And then from each time we have a video for whatever we're doing, uh, we put it onto Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Uh, and then we've, uh, through other various events, we've accumulated a database of people that live in the neighborhood. And then we do a direct email to them as well and know what's going on. Great. So that's a lot of touch points. Yes. I would say that you have a lot of touch points on a regular basis. And 100%. You, and you measure those. So you have a set number of touch points? Yeah. No, we have to, no, I mean, it's, uh, we're making sure we're touching the people on the farm at least minimum. Minimum has to be uh, once a week, for sure, 100%. Cool. Okay. Judy, do you want to take the other side? Judy? Or Cynthia, go ahead. Oh, sorry. That's fine. I was going to say, Judy, do you want to tell us a little bit about your area? Because your market's a little bit different in New Brunswick. So, yeah. my area in New Brunswick, I work in a population of about 130, 130,000 people, roughly. Um, average sale price is about one eighty, one hundred eighty thousand dollars. So it's a totally different market than maybe a lot of you guys are accustomed to. Um, I've just started farming about eight months ago, and I send out cards and uh, newsletters every four to six weeks. I vary it so that it's not too consistent, um, and I've had good success. I've had listings and sales right from the first mailing. So I think people had it in their mind and then move forward. So. And I picked my farm area just because of turnover and location. So I was trying to uh, get an area that I knew there was a lot of turnover and good, solid homes with, you know, middle class, middle of the road homes and buyers. Okay. Do you want to pass that to Cynthia? We'll ask her the same question. Sort of tell us a little bit about the market and how many touch points you have in your in your farm area. Mm -hmm. So so basically, I um, I I have about maybe about fifteen thousand people in my immediate farm area. Um, I touch, uh, I pretty much send things out about every two weeks, so about twice a month. Um, it'll be business cards or just sold and just listed. Um, I also follow up with, um, with phone calls as well. So we do have a team and, and basically they, they do follow up afterwards. So that's a pretty big difference when we're looking at it. You've got a farming area of about 15,000 mm -hmm. and you've got an entire community of about 130,000. Yeah. Your touch points are once every four weeks, you're touching every once every two weeks. Mm -hmm. and, and why would you say that you touch that often in that area? Consistency is very important. I mean, it's an area that there are a lot of agents there. Um, so you, you just want to make sure that you are in front of the client, you know, more often than everybody else. Okay. And you, it's also probably true you have more competition for their eyeballs in that area. Absolutely. Right. I grew up in the area, so, you know, I know a lot about the area as okay. well. 
in that. So do you guys want to give us an answer to kind of what your market in farm areas like? Yeah, we uh, we farm about 15,000. We do 10,000 homes and we do uh, 5,000 condos. We mail 30 time, 39 times a year. We've been farming for 16 years. Made a lot of mistakes along the way. Uh, what we do now to get the tremendous su success that we're getting is we um, we put just listed just sold on the back and we increased our, our consistency. And what we found, we keep the message the same. Free market valuation, I think, is the best thing going. You just, that's what the people want. That's what you should put out there. And I don't think you just keep the message simple. They'll call. I think a lot of other things that people are doing, like egg hunts and this and stuff, and I, I know we brand everything also with Remax, because then you don't have to sell yourself. They know who you are, and they know you're in real estate. And our, we picked our farm because of the lower price point, because I thought there'd be more churn, and there is high churn in that, uh, that area. The only shocking thing that I would find looking back at it is I always thought I'd get two deals from every listing. I thought I'd get a buy and sell, and what we find is we're moving a lot more people out of the market. The seniors are moving out, and we're not getting that. So that was the only thing I would try. I thought I going after that market, we'd get a buy and a sell, but we tend to be moving people out. We don't, out of five listings, maybe we get one or two buys. Okay. Well, that's really interesting because they say that one of the things that you should track when you're targeting a farm area is the churn rate, right? You should look at it and it should have a minimum of 8 to 10 percent churn rate. So is that something you guys considered and, and do you say that you know your churn rate in your area and could you, could you tell us what it is or you kind of, yeah? Do you want to tell us what it is? Uh, I know that it's about 8 percent okay. in my area, which is very good for where I am. The average days on market is 180 days. Wow. And I saw, I saw a newsletter here that had nine days, and I thought it was a typo. Uh, <laughs> Surely you're missing a zero. Yes, and a one. <laughs> um, so 8% is, is a very good area. And the other thing for mine is that um, I have my car branded, and I have weather tags that are just 10 seconds. You know, the weather's brought to you by Judy Mitchell. And all of that little things have kind of combined that when I say my name now, people say, oh, yeah, you're in real estate, which is my whole goal in marketing. So do you, do you find that, um, I'll come back to the question with you guys, but do you find that you kind of have to have different prospecting strategies when you have, you know, an 8% churn rate, but you also have that long of a days on market average? Like, you're actually prospecting the people that are listed with you to kind of keep them motivated during that period of time too, right? That's right. I want them to remember that I'm still in the business and that I'm, you know, the person they should be thinking about. Um, and I don't want them to get frustrated and feel like they should move on. So yeah, you have to keep everyone interested and make sure that they know that you're really the only name in town and all those other people are just imposters. So what kind of touch points would you have with the, well, yeah. <laughs> what kind of touch points would you have with them? So keeping them kind of engaged and not frustrated. Uh, with the vendors? Yep. With the vendors? Well, I, uh, for me, I have to phone the vendors at least once a week every 10 days maximum. Um, and just make sure, and Facebook is really critical for me. As soon as I list a host, I'm on, I've Facebooked them, and I'm communicating all the time through Facebook an awful lot. But the car and the uh, weather tags have been very good for me. Okay. So, Mark, do you want to tell us sort of kind of your churn rate and, and kind of how that affects your area? Yeah, no, in our area, it's kind of neat because we have a bit of a differential in types of homes in the neighborhood. So we have everything from uh, bungalows, semi-detached to North Toronto old school, square plan detached to brand new homes. So the ranges in price go anywhere from, you know, um, for a semi right now, starting point is uh, high sevens, low eights, up to over a million dollars for the detached, and then into the new homes, which are going to get into one upper one seven range to over two million dollars. So um, the thing is the turnover rate is actually really good. It's in that 8 to 10% range. It turns over quite regularly because there's so many different levels of people wanting to get in and out of the neighborhood. Uh, combined with the fact that we're on the subway line, which is huge demand for tons of people that work downtown, combined with we have one of the top rated schools in the area in John Wanless, which basically people will give one of their left arms or right arms or firstborn to get into that school district, So, which is a huge plus for the neighborhood. I would say um, the area I do is about eight to ten percent as well. Um, a lot of first-time home buyers buying in the area. It's a it, in the West End, so it's a little lower in price. A lot of renovators buying in the area as well, renovating, flipping. So it, that makes it more consistent. So yeah. And do you actively target or prospect to renovators or investors? 
We do. We have, yeah, we do. We have a ton of, of people that are buying to renovate. Yeah. Okay. We, even, we even motivate our clients that, that do already own properties to, to actually do this as well. Oh, Where wow. if they're not buying a second home to, to rent, they're actually buying something small to renovate. Yeah. And do you have resources that you would direct them to? I mean, obviously not a, watch HGTV, right? Like something realistic. Do you have like resources that you would direct them to if you were looking to get them to kind of do that whole renovation mm -hmm. or yeah. well we do we do mail outs right mm -hmm. um and and in that we'll we'll tell them you know how it is and how many homes in the area are selling that are are potential of, of renovating and how how much people are actually making uh, doing that as well so that usually gets them going and then we have a whole you know um the whole uh thing the businesses that we refer as well and they're these are businesses that actually do you know the whole renovation stuff so if they're if if a client of ours got into this and they didn't have the right people to actually help out we would actually extend that service to them as well awesome yeah. okay so i'm going to kind of switch gears for a second here and i'm going to start over here but i'm going to make um i'm going to make liz answer this question because she doesn't want to um so you guys have been farming your particular area for a really long time 16 years you said right yeah. and so I'm going to ask you all this so you can think about this in advance, but I want you to tell me one thing that's worked really well and one thing that was a total flop, didn't work at all. Well, I think as Jeff touched on, it was more consistency than anything. We, were, we weren't following any sort of system. We were, every time we got a listing, we'd send out a card, you know, sometimes one month, sometimes not a month, until we got on a really consistent uh, schedule and a consistent message, we really, that really made a difference. And also when we put our um, solds on the back of our card. So we've got um, you know, free market evaluation on the front and we got our solds on the back. Mm -hmm. uh, that seemed to make a really big impact. Just people being able to see that you do sell homes in the area and they can recognize the home and, and they see them coming in right. through their mailbox. So that helped in terms of when you, were, when you were calling them or approaching them, they said, oh yeah, we saw that you sold that or that helped because that actually generated calls to you? Both. Both. It, it, uh, people would recognize a home, so they'd see it. And, and then we also got calls from people saying, you know, I saw you sold, sold a home on our street. How much did it sell for? I've been thinking of selling. Uh, it's just people like to, it catches their attention. Whereas when we originally did the just one-sided with just a free market evaluation, it didn't, it didn't seem to capture their attention. What, what they catches their eye is the solds on the back. Okay. So, yeah, go ahead. The thing uh, that when I, before I was in real estate, there was this lady up, uh, up where we used to live and she advertised the just sold or just that house for six months. It was the same house. I just was <laughs> in tune to seeing that. So I can tell you, if you don't have a lot of listings, you just advertise, advertise the same thing over and over. They don't know. But when it's time to list, they say, oh, there's Jeff and Liz and they throw you in the garbage. To grow. But then when it's time to list, they think, oh, that's on our street. And it, they, they have no clue. But that's the biggest difference. Putting the solds, the success on the back, that's what sets you up. And I was a cheapie and never did it at the beginning because I was trying to save money. Because it costs more because you gotta print you gotta print it every week, a different message. Okay. So I guess what I'm taking away from that then is something that works is uh, consistency, obviously. And uh, we're gonna seal that one from Mark. So think of another one. <laughs> and um, and transparency. So making sure that you're always being transparent about what you're selling and what you're doing and making sure that that's, you're advertising that. Yes. Yeah? Okay. Great. Judy? What works, what doesn't? I'd have to say I agree with Jeff that the consistency and having a process in place, like when I first started, maybe two years ago, I sent one out and didn't consistently do it. And it's only been the last, like I say, eight or nine months that I've been doing it very consistently and had a process in place. And I had all the mailings ready for six months in advance so that I didn't get busy and let it lapse. And that was probably the biggest lesson I learned as a as a newbie to to farming um, is that just being prepared and you know financially being prepared but also having everything done in advance made a huge difference for me and then the other thing was consistency in the message just the the logos and everything I use are always the same and I think that that helps because then people start to recognize it yeah absolutely um, so when I first started I was only mailing out once every three weeks which um, wasn't really having the impact that I wanted it to have so then we upped it to once every two weeks, and then we upped it to once every week. But the biggest thing that I think made the hugest difference when you're doing a farm neighborhood is that you have to be, yes, consistent, which I've talked about a gazillion times, but also you have to be present. People have to know that you are in that area, that you are the area specialist, and that they can see you 
recognize you and know that you're around to answer questions and be there. So to do that, there's a couple different ways you can do it, which we do a lot of community events um, where we get involved through different marketing platforms that we use, whether uh, coloring contests or uh, this year we did our first uh, ever pumpkin giveaway that we did in a neighborhood and uh, we videotaped it. We put out a promotional video after it promoting what we did. We had partners with Starbucks and TD Bank and uh, Just Junk and it was absolutely a uh, phenomenal, phenomenal success. But the thing is now, um, I, you know, I can walk down the street and people will wa wave and say hi. I have no idea who they are. <laughs> but the difference is that they've seen enough of my stuff coming through their mailbox week after week after week so they know who I am, which is the most important thing. Um, and that you have to be the expert of that area. You cannot let anything slip through the cracks and not know what's going on in your farm. You have to be on top of everything, whether it's a district school change uh, to some kind of legislation that's coming down. Anything to do with that farm, you gotta be in a know 100%, without a doubt. Yeah, and I think it's important to note what you said about the pumpkin giveaway is that you're actually leveraging what you're doing in different ways. Oh. So, you know, I think that's key for everybody here. No matter what you're doing, finding other ways to leverage it, right? And take a video of a, a client event and use that video to advertise what it is that you do and who well, you are. For sure, because the thing is, you're not going to be the only person farming in that neighborhood. There's going to be other people that have been doing it and probably been doing it longer than you have if you're just getting started. So how do you exactly differentiate yourself showing that you are and can be different than the other person who you are working against? And you have to be about them, not only just about you. So yes, you have to have your just listing, your just sold cards, and that you sold the house down the street 100%, but you also have to show that you're a human being, you have a life, and that you care about them, and it's not just about you. Yeah. Can we repeat that? It's not just about you? It Should is we? not Scrabble just time. about you. It's, it's about, you. about them. <laughs> <laughs> No, and it is, and that's the biggest mistake most people make when it comes down to doing this business, whether it's a database or a farm, yep. is that you think about me, 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 and it's actually, it's all about them. And I say to my guys is, think about if you were on the other side of the phone line or other side of the table, how you would want to be treated if somebody was talking to you about real estate. And do you want someone to care about you and be engaging you and thinking about you, or do you want it to be all about them? Yeah. Right. So, Cynthia, you want to tell us something that's worked and something that didn't work at all, or... In terms of things not working, I mean, I've tried a little bit of everything. I mean, from door knocking to, to calling and mail outs. Um, I, I personally like, like all of it. I mean, there are some people that will relate m uh, better to a specific, you know, whether it's door knocking or not. But I know people that hate door knocking, and I know other people that love door knocking, and they're very successful at it. So I think you just have to pick whatever works for you uh, personally and just focus on that. Um, and again, like everybody else said, um, when farming, definitely, um, I think persistency is one. You gotta be very persistent. You gotta follow up. Um, you gotta really have a, a system that will facilitate all of this for you. And, um, and consistency as well, right? Yeah. You gotta be very consistent because if you're not being consistent, somebody else, your competitor is, right? So you gotta make sure. And knowing the area, uh, like everybody said, is very important as well. You gotta know things that your clients are talking about and, and you actually gotta offer them that information before they even bring it up. So that's important. Yeah, so being proactive, being consistent, being persistent. I think those are all pretty good keywords well, there to come out of that. And yeah. Patience. And if you're just patience, patience, obviously. If you're, just, oh, sorry. if you're just starting out your farm, you got to be patient 100% without a doubt. It takes time. It's like if uh, you're going to become a farmer, like actual grow live crops, you know, the first time you plant your seeds, you might not get the results that you wanted. It might take the second time or the third time before it actually gets the impact that you want but you gotta be patient. And what most agents do is they pick a farm area, they get all excited about it, they're gonna work that area, and they go at it for maybe a month or two months or three months, and they're not seeing any results right away, and then they let it go through the wayside, and all that hard work and money you put into it is now for nothing. You gotta stay with it, make it your goal that, that you are gonna become the most dominant person in that area, and keep at it and don't stop. That's how you become successful in doing a farm. Perfect, okay, Jeff, so to kind of turn that back to you, so you've done that. You've spent a lot of time in a certain area. So give us some ideas of how you showcase to that area your local knowledge and your expertise, that you are the, the premier farmer in that area. Well, I grew up in the area, so I know all the bad spots of where I did bad things. So <laughs> I can talk to people when I'm... I think I'm we have photos of the... No, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no Facebook. Um, so, so I think you got to relate to where you're farming. You got to relate to the area. You got to relate to the people, and you got to be able to speak in the same language as, uh, of the people that are there. Uh, Etobicoke is a very middle class. It's, South Etobicoke is very middle class. It's very you know non pretentious, which I like. Um, they know that I, I know all the schools. If anyone asks me about any school, I know the EQA scores. I know everything about the neighborhood. So I think that if you're called in and you're asked questions, you've got to be able to answer that. When I'm showing houses in the area, I can speak to this is coming up. There's a Starbucks. There's two Starbucks or three Starbucks opening on Lakeshore that I can speak to and that people love Starbucks. And you know, local knowledge, I think, is important. But the other thing is you just want to be true to where you are. So whatever your message is, just be true to that because people see through all the sales pitches. Like the last CMA Liz was on, she had, they had 10 agents in for the interview and Liz beat out that person. So 10, oh, you're competing right. with a lot of people. Like there's 39,000 of us now, right? So you gotta make sure that whatever you're, whatever you're advertising, you try to come across to, to, to that person or to that, those people that you're, because that's consistently what Liz gets. She goes on all the listings, I do not. And she gets about 90% of them. So she's doing something right, but she just doesn't like to speak in front of people. So all the questions directed yeah, to her say, would be good. I was gonna say, why do we even have him here, right? We could have just had you. <laughs> so question for all of you, and I'll let you decide who, who wants to go first here. Let's say that you're starting out, you have a newer farm area, you don't have a lot of business there, you really need some new business. So let's talk prospecting tips. So let's talk about what, are your, what would you do if you needed some business right away? What's your go-to and why? Don't all speak at once. Judy? Well, I think if you need business right away, then I think you've got to be very aggressive in doing the open houses. If you don't have listings in the area, see who has listings in your office and do their open houses. Um, I'm not a fan of door knocking, but I know it does work for some. Um, for me, it's been, um, I, well, I think Jeff just used the word authentic, and I think that's the most important thing mm -hmm. any of us can do. Um, we are people dealing with people, and that really is the only thing that matters to most of the people. So I just try to be who I am. Um, I do an awful lot of volunteer and charity work, and so I meet a lot of people through that, and that helps a lot. And uh, I was born and raised in the area, so there, you know, I not only know the area, but I know the people and who lived in the house before, and so that helps a lot because it makes it easier when I'm talking to people to really relate to the street and say, well, the street is really growing, and people are aging on this street, or it's a new young family street. So I think that that helps an awful lot, just being intimate with the neighborhood and being you know, present. Okay. And Mark? Um, well, just quick background on that. I moved here nine years ago from Vancouver, so I was a realtor out west for uh, nine years there before moving here. And I started my business completely all over again from scratch. Um, so when I first got started, I did two open houses, both Saturdays and Sundays, uh, back to back. I actually, you know, there's a 2020 rule. Have anyone ever heard of the 2020? Where you go and you door knock 20 homes on one side of the street and you door knock the other 20 homes on the other side of the street uh, around the open house that you're actually doing so that you invite them to the open house to come and meet them because that's what you're there for. You're there not necessarily to sell the house. You're there to meet the other people and the owners that live in the neighborhood so you can talk to them about getting actual business from them. And um, you got to be out there and find the niche that works best for you. So whether it is door knocking, open housing, uh, which I did a ton of. Um, I think you know when you're personable and you're outgoing, which you should be if you're going to be in the business, it helps. Um, it makes it very easy to engage and talk to people and get them in, in, interested in hearing what you have to say. And then on top of that, make sure you know, again, about the area and about the open house and what's going on and what you're doing. Don't ever go into an open house blind where you don't know the home. You don't know what the ins and outs of it are because they're going to ask you 5,000 questions. You're going to be like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. So, and you're gonna have to go, let me get back to you, let me get back to you, let me get back to you. So, if you are gonna do the opens in the area that you wanna be working in, make and they're not your listings, make sure you know as much about that house before you go in and do the open house. Yeah, great. Um, just to touch on open house, since everybody talked about it, I actually put out about 100 open house signs every time I do an open house. So, 100, 100 open house 100 signs, signs for one I open house. I actually have somebody who does it for me. Okay. Wow. And, uh, well, yeah, that's what, how, how long it takes, actually. But, um, yeah, I mean, I figure if we're going to be, if we're, I'm going to have agents there, or if I'm not there myself, but if I'm going to have agents there sitting there for two hours, I want to make sure I'm going to advertise it and get as many people in there as possible, right? Um, and, and also, when, when, you know, starting a new area, one thing that I do recommend is reach out to the business owners. The business owners know a lot about the area. 
um, I have stands, um, you know, with business cards in the areas that I actually farm, right? So I know all the business owners, and I actually try to drive business to their prop to their places as well. So then they'll they'll be you know very happy to to send you referrals. So that really helps as well. Great. Okay. You guys want to weigh in on that? Uh, well, we built, new we built our business primarily initially on open houses. Uh, we did open houses whenever we could, you know, as long as you do a good open house, you know, like Mark said, you know about the house itself and also any homes that are for sale in the area. It's a great way, easy way to pick up buyers. They eventually turn into sellers and then farming. That was the other way we built our business in the beginning. If I had my time back, I would have jumped right into the farming bigger, in a bigger way right away. Okay. Um, can, you, it, can you expand on that? So if you well, had, when we, we could first, go back and do it again? Yeah. So we had, our, our area, W6, it comprises of four communities mm -hmm. initially, you know, and sometimes you can't afford to do it all at once. We picked one community of maybe 3,000 uh, homes, and we did it. But like I said, it was hit and miss. It was whenever we could afford it, whenever we had a listing, that kind of thing. Um, now we mail the whole area, which is, you know, 12, 15,000 homes. Um, and we do it 39 times a year, like we said, once yeah. a week in the, in the high times. And we tailor that off, obviously, at Christmas and summer, and that kind of thing. Uh, but I would have done that sooner. It's, you know, it, it does require patience. It takes some time to come through, but once it comes, it, it comes. I, I mean, I think it's interesting that I could note that you know, a lot of online conversations, when you're talking about new business, a lot of people say, oh, open houses are no good. Like, you've all heard that, right? Oh, don't do an open house. But it's interesting to hear that everybody up here who's successfully farming an area, and I was working an area of quite a few homes, are all saying that open houses are a great source of business. So, you know, I mean, I think that... Yeah, not to step on anyone. So the problem with open houses that most agents do is they go in, they sit like a bump on a log, have a book, have a magazine, or they got the TV on, and they're not doing anything. The whole reason why you're there is to meet and talk to people. Mm. So if you're not interested in doing that, A, think about what you're doing in the business, number one. But number two, then you better be doing something else to find your business. Because if you're not willing to talk to people and be present and open, then why bother even being there? Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I started this business when I was 25. I'm an original career from real estate. And if it wasn't for open houses, I honestly can say I would not be where I am today. Yeah. Well, I mean, some of you know or some of you don't. I bought a house actually a, a year ago today. And uh, I, I actually ended up going in randomly. We weren't even thinking of buying a house, my husband and I. We were renting. We were pretty happy. And uh, we went into an open house in my neighborhood, really just across the street from where we were living just randomly to see what the house was like. And I walked in and there was a real estate agent sitting there reading a magazine. Thankfully not a Remax agent. That would have been awkward. And, and uh, he said to me, oh, it's winter time. No one's really looking to buy. Oh. I thought, really? Obviously he didn't know who I was. I thought, okay, whatever. We actually ended up going around the corner and going into another open house and we bought that the next day. We weren't thinking of buying, not at all. It wasn't even on our radar. And really I think deep down, I'm a little bit of a rebel, so I think maybe I I bought the house because the first guy was like, nobody's going to buy. But, you know, that happens, right? Absolutely. So, and we're, we're going to answer some questions here in a few minutes, but I, I want to get like a couple of nuggets of best advice, best things that, you know, we've got some great stuff on if you could go back and do it again. But, you know, again, sort of that in your gut, what do you know, what do you feel like works best for you and what do you feel like is your secret? And, and we're going to, you know, all obviously copy you, so... Give us your best one. Um, I always talk about real estate. Everything I do, I talk about real estate. If you ever have a conversation with somebody, they want to talk about real estate. So networking is another big part of where I get business from. And I think that everybody wants to know what house sold down the street. So if you're golfing with somebody, you should know what they're do, what houses have sold because they're going to ask you. And, and real estate is the easiest thing to network. And I always give my, if I golf with somebody, I say, oh, I really enjoy golfing with that, give them my card. You can talk about real estate the whole round, but then you start talking about real estate, he wants to know everything, and then all of a sudden, randomly, I get an email that there's something. I also do a lot of volunteer work, and, and that's a win-win. I've been a big brother for, yeah, I think he's 24 now, he lives with me. But uh, since I was nine, I got so many connections through there, or since he was nine, since he was nine. And... Uh, <laughs> Um, but, but again, it's putting your name out there, and it's, Big Brother's such a great thing. I, I'll tell you, what a, that's a warm, heartening thing, but yeah. you know the wins, the hockey games that I go to, the parents I meet, I met so many people through that, and that is the people you know 
And the people that, that you should know are the easiest way to get referrals and repeat business. And when you meet them when you're not talking real estate, that's the easiest way to get business from them. But yeah. guaranteed, volunteer work is excellent. It's a win-win. Giving starts the receiving process. So I'd recommend anybody get involved with that. Yeah, and you know, I think that's I mean, that's a back to basics thing, right? You can't sell a secret. So if, if you're not telling people what it is you do, you can't be upset when they forget and they go and they hire somebody else, right? So you've got to keep that top of mind, but obviously not in an obnoxious way. So I'm going to ask you to answer the same question sure. because we know um, you're the smart one now. <laughs> well, I can say speak mainly for listings, but um, and it doesn't really have anything to do with farming, but um, if you when you do have listings, you, you just, it sounds cliche, but you have to care about the people. You've got to remember that they're going through um, a tough time in their life, and, and especially with sellers, you've got to keep in contact with them. So we have a, a service report that goes out to them every Monday, Wednesday, Friday to all our sellers by email, and I call them as well. Um, and, and that's hard to do, obviously, if you don't have an assistant. But e before we had our assistant, I always made sure I at least called them twice a week. Because if they're not hearing from you, they're, they're stressing out, whether they're telling you or not. They are. Even if you have nothing to say to them, yep. just call them and say, yep. you know, yep. I haven't forgotten you. Absolutely. Absolutely. You guys? Best tips of advice? Um, I, I don't know if you can get the car picture up. but I can. I, the, probably the best thing I ever did was logo my car and my poor dear husband, uh, who has to drive around with my name and big, huge letters on his car. But it works out really well because I get calls all the time from people who say, I just drove by you on this street or I just saw your husband on that street and I've been meaning to call you. So you can see that uh, they tease me that my eyesight's not very good. It's not um, up there yet. We'll get oh, it's not up. Um, the font is big. I have friends on like the fifth and seventh floor of buildings who text me and say, you just drove by. Do you want to have coffee? Um, so that was probably the best thing I've ever done. Um, I'm also not shy about making sure people know I'm in real estate. I have it on my clothes. I have it on my jackets. And I think that people have to remember that's what I do. Even people, you know, I went to high school with or I've lived with, you know, in the same community my whole life. Sometimes they just forget what I do now because they haven't seen me in years. And so... Um, I think just being clear on, you know, Judy Mitchell with Remax, uh, that's been very helpful because when time comes that they know somebody, then they do think of me. I think it all goes back to consistency. Uh, at the end of the day, I think you just, you got to decide if you're going to do it, you do it, just do it. Don't stop doing it and be consistent about it. That's the number one key to the success of it. And again, you know, get involved in community events. Um, I coached my boys' hockey teams. Uh, last year, I sold over $3 million of real estate just from coaching the hockey team and in the farm on top of it, right? So there are parents who uh, were on the team and who also live in the area as well. So if you're not involved in community stuff, and like, you got to, again, it's what you guys said, it, it, you know, giving starts the receiving process. You got to give back. Otherwise, people are just not going to get engaged with you. That's the best advice I can give you. But be consistent, consistent, consistent. Um, I do a lot of promotional stuff for my client and within my database as well. So I do have a lot of clients that refer me a lot of business. We do have a huge referral um, uh, business within uh, the team. So I do give a lot of stuff away. Like we, a couple of years ago, we gave away a car. Um, but it could be little things like trips. I mean, I'm giving away a few trips to Brazil for the World Cup, right? That's coming up. So um, just That's giving a little thing. Can I get on your Absolutely. mailing list there? I'd Absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, to me, it's a little thing because the, these, I mean, like somebody said, there's 39,000 agents um, right now registered. So they're doing you a favor by referring people to you, right? So the, the least you could do is give something back. So I do do a lot of promotional stuff for my promotional stuff for my clients because at the end of the day, they're the ones that are keeping me going by referring all this business to me. So, yeah. Okay, so one last question and then we'll open it up for questions from the audience. Uh, what do you use to keep track? Do you have a CRM? What do you use to keep track of your farm area and your, and your results? I do um, top producer. Okay. Is that what you mean? Like yep. a database? Yeah. yeah. So top producer, and uh, it, it's great. I mean, there's so much um, in top producer. Actually, I, I had somebody join the team who um, completely mastered top producer, and uh, we're using it to the fullest, finally. Awesome. Yeah. Mark, what are you using? Uh, we use iExact. Okay. So we find it just a little bit simpler than top producer, a little bit more real estate user-friendly, um, and it works really well. 
I'm also using iExact. Okay. And what do you guys do? Uh, we use Top Producer, and we just use you know Excel spreadsheets to track our lead trackers and stuff like that. Awesome. And that totally wasn't planned that both of those companies have a booth here today. <laughs> that was just convenient. So do we have any, uh, we have some really great people on the panel here with some really, you know, smart, great experience. Do we have some questions? If you have a question, just stand up and, uh, and just, are you're saying you assume it's all non-addressed bulk mail? Is that what your question is? Okay, yeah? Yep. Yes, we mail through Canada Post, uh, so it's postal code blocks. Okay, you guys? No? Mine's all unaddressed, and I highly recommend you make sure you go through Best Agent. The rates are very, very good. Yep. Mark? We have a private person who does it for us because the postal walks don't necessarily work for the farm area. Okay. It takes them off in different directions, which doesn't really benefit me in any way. So there are guys out there that you can use that will do uh, private delivery. So this is somebody that you hire? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I do. I do it private as well. We have a company who does the area that we do. Okay. Great. And Mark, you're going to be willing to tweet out who that is? Mm. Awesome. Great. Any other questions? Anybody want to tap into stand up right there in the white shirt? Yeah, so what are you seeing as price difference? What are you seeing uh, as far as the price if you're going private versus what you might pay for unaddressed ad mail? Um, I, private, I think we're paying, if I remember correctly, I think it's either six or seven cents a piece. So, a so it, it's, it's not much different than uh, Canada Post. It's just the difference is one, you don't have to take it to the post office, which is nice. You don't have to bundle it. Uh, the guy comes, picks it up from the office, and then off it goes, and I don't have to worry about it. Sure. So it's much, it's much easier that way. So for the record, I believe that the Remax rate is nine cents. So he's talking a couple of cents different, but also maybe some time and, and frustration, maybe? OK. Did we have another question here? Yeah? So I'm going to repeat that question so everybody can hear it. He's saying he's attending a number of sessions today, and they're all saying online is the way to go. He went to mine this morning. And he's saying these guys are all saying it's maybe not so much online. It's more maybe the basics, right? It's, so it's, it's, it's both. It's yeah. you wanna? <laughs> I agree with Mark. It's both. Um, I find personally that my emails, I get so many and so many that I just hit delete to. But I was noticing the mailbox was getting less empty month after month. And so physically, I think that someone has something in their hand, and they can look at it, and it's a card. And that's just, I think it glues better in their mind, personally. And what do you guys think about that? I, I agree. I think that um, email is easy to, it gets lost in the shuffle of every email. I mean, if this is in your mailbox, you have no choice but to empty your mailbox and throw it in the bin. And that's probably why, where the consistency comes in as well, because if they see the same thing every every week, week after week after week, it's sort of subliminal. It's those few seconds that they pick it up and throw it away. They're seeing the same thing all the time. Once, but when they're thinking real estate, then they're going to say, oh, these guys, they're always in my mailbox. You know. and, and that being said, I think we should clarify that nobody on this, on this panel does not have an online presence, though, right? You all have a website. You all are creating videos. You're all present out there and being able to be found online. You're just also still relying on those traditional methods, correct? Yeah. Yeah. OK. We've got time for about one more question. Anybody else? Way in the back. You're going to have to yell, honey. She'd, she'd love to see some more information on your listing presentation, she's saying. She's, she's very impressed with you. Oh, sure. Just, she thinks you're um, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Told you. Just give me my, uh, your uh, card or email. Sure. sure. And then and we also have, uh, did you want to share a little information about your listing presentation? Uh, sure. I don't or? have it with me, obviously. So I could have brought it with but me. Kind of the flow. Um, or? But I just, again, it's consistent. I could do it in my sleep, you know. I mean, you just do the same thing over and over. So it's basically just showing as much value as I can. Um, I bring as, you know, I, when I have comparables in, the, uh, in my listing presentation now, what I find helpful is I attach the pictures, you know, from Treb to the, to the back of each listing so they can really see, you know, how renovated it was, how it compares to theirs. Okay. So Good we idea. spend some time going through that to try to, and then I can kind of get a gauge on, you know, price fairly easily with them. And then after that, it's just all about the value, just showing them how we work, what we're going to do. Um, we do, uh, you know, same thing as I'm sure everybody else, but we do, you know, home pre-home inspection, uh, staging is very important, P 
pictures are very important. I show them, you know, poor pictures versus professional pictures and how that's important and how people are online, you know, deciding to see their property based on the pictures, really. Um, you know, we have a moving van that we have just recently purchased for our clients, so I tell them a bit about that. And just as much value as you can show, and you just have to be genuine and... Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I think it comes down to a couple key words that we heard today, right? Consistency, value, authenticity, you know, persistency, patience. None of these are new things. We've all heard this before, but I think, you know, you, hopefully you've got a couple of ways here that you've found um, that these are being applied. I'd, I'd love to take your question. We've got two minutes. I have a question Farm. Oh, that's a really good question. I think there's probably no good simple answer for that. The question was, in, when you're farming, what's the minimum time required for it to work? Um, I think it's going to, I'll answer for all of you guys on this, I'm, and unless you want to, Jeff. I, I guarantee you it's a minimum of 12 months, minimum, and I think it's 24 months, and, if you're, and that's if you're doing it a lot, because I've done every which way to try to once a month, once every other week, I've done it all, 39 times a year, for tw for 24 months, if you've got a high turn, because if you got to you got to know your market. If you're if you're farming to somewhere that's not turning over, then you're going to ha not have success either way. But you have to make sure there's high turn, and and it's 24 months. I think is your key. Great. Okay. We. I'm sorry I have to cut you off, but I'm I'm sure they'll stick around and answer questions afterwards. Just wanted to mention up on the screen we have their Twitter handles. If you'd like to reach out to any of these folks, I just really like you to give them a, a warm round of applause and thank you for sharing their time today. Thank you guys very much. All right.